Today, I will be reading The Paper Dragon by Marguerite W. Duvall and illustrated by Robert Sabuda. Long ago, there lived a humble artist named Mi Fei. Between each day's sunrise and sunset, Mi Fei would dip his narrow brushes in colored inks and paint on paper scrolls. He loved to paint the glorious past, scenes of the gods and their festivals, portraits of great heroes and their deeds. People from far beyond his village came to buy Mi Fei's scrolls so they could learn about their gods and heroes as one would learn from from books. But the artist cared nothing for the fame his paintings brought him. He was a simple man, content to live and work in his own village. When children crowded his windows to watch him paint, Mi Fei would come to them, come in! When neighbors appeared at his door, he put his brushes aside, ready to listen to their latest tales of triumph or woe. Mi Fei was happy, surrounded by people he loved. How does this picture make you feel? One morning, Mi Fei's work was interrupted by shouts outside his window. A messenger, a messenger, people cried as they ran past. Brush in hand, Mi Fei rushed to join his neighbors in the village square. The messenger, Mu Wang, brought distressing news. The great dragon of Lung Mountain, Su Jin, has awakened from its hundred years sleep and is loose upon the land, the messenger gasped. Its huge legs have trampled rice fields into mud, and the winds created by its lashing tail have uprooted the mulberry trees, destroying the silkworms. Su Jin's fiery breath has scorched the tea leaves on the bushes. Villages everywhere are in ruins. Someone must face the dragon, Mu Wong warned the crowd. Someone must convince it to sleep once more, or your village too will be crushed under the weight of Su Jin. The frightened people murmured among themselves. Was anyone in their village brave enough and clever enough to confront a dragon? One by one, they turned to Mi Fei. You know all about the gods and heroes, one of the villagers said. Surely you can find a way to stop Su Jin. Mi Fei showed shook his head. I am no hero, he protested. Only a simple artist who paints the past. All I know of heroic deeds has been told to me by others. But the villagers crowded around him pleading for his help. Looking into their worried faces, he knew he could not refuse. The next morning, Mi Fei tucked some rice cakes into his pack, along with brushes, paper, and ink. He bundled up his painted scrolls to bring him comfort. Knowing he might never see his friends and neighbors again, Mi Fei looked around his beloved village one last time. Then he sadly set off for a long mountain. Through valleys and across streams, Mi Fei walked, stopping only to pick a few berries to eat or to quench his thirst at a spring. After many hours, he reached a long mountain. Mi Fei stared upward. Smoke and flames billowed from the mountaintop, and enormous rocks bounced down the steep slopes. Mi Fei was frightened, but up, up he climbed until he stood at Lung Mountain's peak. Thick mist swirled around him. How does the illustrator show the passage of time in this picture? Then, through the mist, with a rumbling roar so loud, Mi Fei thought his head would burst. The dragon appeared. Ha! Who dares to disturb Su Jen, the source of fire, the heart of the mountain? Mi Fei trembled. He turned to run away from the terrifying sight, but the worried faces of the villagers filled his mind, and Mi Fei turned back to face the dragon. He bowed low and managed to say, I am Mi Fei, a humble painter of scrolls. Bright fire spurted from the dragon's nostrils, hot on Mi Fei's face. The wind from its lashing tail nearly blew him off his his feet, but somehow Mi Fei was able to stand his ground. Please, Su Jin, the villages below us are in ruins. You have scorched the tea leaves and trampled the rice, leaving nothing for people to eat or drink. You have uprooted the mulberry trees and the silkworms are dying, leaving nothing for people to wear or sell. I beg of you, return to your sleep of a hundred years. Huge scales glistened as the dragon coiled itself into a tight circle. Its red eyes glowed. Ha, Mi Fei, know that I, before return to my ageless slumber, someone must perform three tasks. Until then, thundered the dragon, its forked tongue flickering in and out, I must prowl the countryside, trampling and burning all in my path. Mi Fei sighed. Could a simple artist stop Su Jin's devastation? His voice very small. Mi Fei asked the dragon, What what are the three tasks? Su Jin's terrible teeth clicked once, twice. First tell me, Mi Fei, the beast said, what is the most important thing your people have created? The artist answered without thinking. Paper, he said. The paper on which I paint my scenes. Hey, Paper? Indeed, the dragon howled with laughter. The first task, then, is to bring me fire wrapped in paper. Go, do this before sunset, or I must devour you. How would you feel facing down a dragon?
Mi Fei crouched behind a large rock, seeking shelter from the dragon. He shook his head. How can I carry out Su Jin's task? He asked himself. Impossible. I was foolish to say paper, important as it is to me, instead of brass or tin. But paper. Mi Fei looked down at the bundle of scrolls he had carried from his village. People far and wide learn of their history from my paper scrolls, he thought. Perhaps knowing the past can help me find answers for the present. Mi Fei unrolled one scroll after another, looking at each of them carefully. On one scroll, he had painted a celebration of light, the festival of the first full moon. Mi Fei smiled as he examined the scene. Then he took out his small knife and cut the paper scroll, folding and fashioning it into a different shape. Before the sun slid from sight, Mi Fei returned to face Su Jin. Although nervous so close to the dragon, he took a candle stump from his pack and lit the wick from Su Jin's fiery breath. Mi Fei placed the burning candle inside the paper lantern he had made. The dragon laughed and the flame in its nostrils died to a wisp of smoke. Mi Fei knew he had succeeded. But then Su Jin began to whip its heavy tail back and forth so violently, the clouds in the sky were swept away. Your second task is to bring me the wind captured by paper, the dragon roared. Do this before noon tomorrow, or I must devour you. Mi Fei slept very little that night. He had solved the first task, but the second seemed far more difficult. Can my scrolls help me again? He asked himself over and over. In morning's orange glow, he again unrolled his scrolls, one after another. Mi Fei stared at one, a hero's rescue of a beautiful princess, lost in the hot desert, then nodded. Quickly, he took out his small knife and cut the paper scroll, folding and fashioning it into a new shape. What are some ways you can use paper? Mi Fei found the dragon resting. Its eyes closed. He approached the scaly beast and with the folded paper began to fan its face. The wind captured in the fan tickled Su Jin. Opening its eyes, the dragon laughed once more and lazily uncoiled its massive tail. Mi Fei knew he had succeeded again. But almost instantly, Su Jin opened its red eyes wide and bellowed. Your third task is to bring me the strongest thing in the world carried in paper. Do this before sundown or I must devour you. Mi Fei hurried back to the shelter of the rock. The strongest thing Thing in the world, he repeated. Is it Sujin or the rock I now lean against? What huge, heavy thing can be carried in paper? His scrolls had saved him twice, and Mi Fei once again unrolled each one, searching for an answer. But no matter how hard he looked, this time not one of the scrolls offered Mi Fei a solution. He set them aside, disheartened. Surely Sujin will devour me at sundown, he said. Resigned, Mi Fei reached into his pack and took out his brushes, paper, and inks. He began to paint, certain that it would be for the last time. But he did not paint scenes of gods or heroes. Instead, Mi Mi Fei painted what was the closest to his heart, what he cherished the most. He began to paint the people of his village, young and old, men, women, and children. What do you cherish the most that you would paint? Mi Fei worked until the sun arced low in the west, but then wearily laid his brushes aside. He looked at the familiar world he had recreated, the faces of friends and neighbors he loved. Words began to crowd his head, take shape, and become a poem. Mi Fei picked up his brush and made the poem a part of his painting. When he had finished, Mi Fei looked for a long time at what he had created. Then he smiled and nodded. He knew what he would do. This time, Mi Fei did not cut the paper or fold it into a new shape. Instead, he carefully rolled up the scroll and tied it with a red ribbon. Once more, Mi Fei trudged along the narrow mountain path. The enormous beast lay waiting, its great length coiled around and around the mountaintop. Opening its wide mouth lined with pointed yellow teeth, the dragon said, Well, am I to eat you for dinner? Mi Fei held out the picture he had created and said in a clear, firm voice, Love can move mountains, stretch the sky, calm the sea. Love brings light and life. When he had finished, Mi Fei looked into Su Jin's eyes. He was astonished to see that the dragon was shrinking. In a whisper rather than a war, Su Jin said, Thank you. Mi Fei, you have found the way for me to sleep once more. Truly the strongest thing in the world is love. With that, the dragon became smaller and smaller, until with a flip of its tail, Su Jin disappeared. In its place, Mi Fei found a small paper dragon. He carefully placed it within the scroll to take back to his village. For the rest of his long life, Mi Fei continued to paint the gods in their festivals, to portray the exploits of great heroes. He continued to paint the portraits of the villagers he knew and loved. But whatever he painted, he always drew a small dragon in one corner to remind everyone of the strongest thing in the world. If you drew one thing on all your pictures, what would it be?